we were driving back on I-20, that's the road that takes you from uh, you know, North Louisiana to North Texas. Uh, I think probably two or three UFOs and one of them major, several cars in front of me slam on their brakes and kind of swerved side to side. And then the next moment I woke up in Dallas and my son's next to me. You could be the strongest, toughest man, but when something that takes power over you and puts you in a vulnerable situation and lets you know you have no control to the point where it affects my work life, it affects the kind of people I have around me, the relationships I have with my family. Having extraterrestrial contact, oftentimes many people underestimate the power of these contacts when everyday people come in contact with UFOs or extraterrestrial encounters. And sometimes it can be a overwhelming, exciting experience. In other cases, it could really cause some havoc, just as it did with Blake Stanley. I invited Blake here to the High Strangers uh, studios. He gladly accepted the invitation. And I asked him, was it okay for me to go deep into his story? He agreed to be open and transparent to the audience, but also go into the trauma that it has caused him in his life. And as many people out here think that people are crazy because they've seen UFOs or extraterrestrials experience, it's really the latter because these experiences are things that people can't explain. It's very difficult to tell your loved ones, someone that you trust about these experiences. And sometimes, it can cause a wedge in between relationships, whether it's family, brothers, sisters, wives, best friends, whomever. I encourage you to listen to this story until the end so that you personally can gather the impact that extraterrestrial encounters have on individuals. With me being a UFO investigator, hosting several TV shows, but I do know that everybody's focusing on what's in the sky. For me, I think it's time for us to focus what's happening on the ground with individuals like yourself. So take the time to watch this video. Post positive comments for Blake because it takes a lot of strength to sit down and share the most intimate side of a UFO encounter. And I will give out a disclaimer because what you're about to hear, you may not believe. Blake, um, I want to welcome you here to Wada Big Secret Studios and uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you, Roger. Blake, uh, let's start with, tell us, the audience, where you're originally from. So I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, and I've been in Dallas since I was 22, so 2015. What was your life like in Shreveport, Louisiana? So uh, it's a little bit rough in Shreveport. I don't know if anybody knows about that part of Louisiana, but or Louisiana in general, but yeah, it's a little rough. Um, very humble as well, a lot of love. That's one thing that you don't really get in the city in Dallas, it's just fast pace. Um, it was, generally it was rough, I'll put it like that, but um, that's the reason why I came to Dallas, so, you know. What made it so rough? I would say just the crime, uh, being kind of where there's a lot of poverty, not where there's a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, schools really were not that great. Um, and I don't put that on the teachers or anything. I just think that it's uh, it's just not the best place as far as, you know, making a family. Tell me about your family uh, when you were in Louisiana. So I, uh, <clears throat> I kind of grew up very independent. Um, I do have a mom, I do have a dad, and my mom uh, lives in Louisiana. My dad has pretty much always lived in Dallas. So I grew up uh, first 11 years of my life with my mom. After that, I moved in with my dad and he had to move to Shreveport where I was. And he's also gay. So that's also kind of um, a little bit hard in that time uh, in Louisiana. So that's part of the reason why he liked being in Dallas. Um, I like Dallas just because of uh, the big city, how fast paced everything is, the opportunities. And um, that's pretty much what brought me over here. He was gay, how did that make you feel? So it made me feel uh, no different towards him. That actually, I don't think impacted any of my feelings towards him. 
I think uh, him being gay and how people react to that, how people would, uh, you know, people say things, kids say things, and, you know, that would get to me. Um, but my dad being gay never really bothered me. Now that you're in Dallas, um, what do you do for a living? So I've been either bartending or uh, bar managing for the last 10 years. And uh, I'm trying to transition out of that field, but um, that's one of those industries where if you get in there, you kind of get stuck, but that's not necessarily how it's going to be with me. Um, we could cut that if that's okay, Roger. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah. No, uh, don't worry could, about it. Could you ask just that question talking. again? Yeah. What do you do for work? So for work, uh, I bartend, and that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 10 years, uh, either bartending or bar managing. And, um, you know. Are you married? I'm not married, luckily. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, I do have two children with uh, the same woman, and I'm not married. Tell me about your life now as a parent. So as a parent, it's beautiful. Uh, that's the first thing I'll say. I love my children, and I think that um, I had a lot of time to live my life and party, and I still live my life, but as far as my kids, now, you know, I live for them, and just seeing them live their life is beautiful to me. How many kids do you have? I have two. I have a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So what are their names? Kyson and Neo. Tell me a little bit the difference between the two. <laughs> so Kyson, he is as calm and sweet as can be. He gets rambunctious like any child, but my youngest son, Neo, he's just off the walls. He's uh, goofy, but also very sweet too. Um, but as far as their temperaments, pretty different temperaments. Tell me a little bit of how you feel about your encounter. The encounter that we're referring to, I feel like I'm not alone, first off. I think that a lot of people have also had encounters similar to mine or unique in their own ways. but. I feel like, honestly, kind of shamed. I feel like uh, shunned, shamed, you know, kind of ridiculed, um, judged, pretty much just a, a lot of negative, uh, I guess, connotations towards, you know, my encounter. And so when I try to speak about it, I kind of have to, you know, hush, hush, just to make it keep my sanity or let people see me in the light where I want to be seen, you know, not crazy. Does it hurt that they're not receiving your encounter or your experience? It does hurt. When it first happened, I shared it with my sister. I shared it with um, my children's mother, uh, shared it with my dad, probably should have never done that. Um, but I thought, you know, this happened, this, this is what happened. And, you know, for them, it's like, no, that didn't happen. Or oh, this guy seems crazy. And that instantly takes any validity from what I'm saying away. And I can't talk about any type of, um, you know, science or math behind anything to do with that because, you know, I don't have a degree in anything mathematical. I don't have a science degree. So, that takes away any validity right there. And that's what I mean by not being alone. I think a lot of people are in similar situations to where they could be as intelligent as anybody, but the fact that, you know, people around them don't see them as valid, you know, that completely takes away anything from anybody's story. And that's what I feel like with me. I feel like um, you giving me the opportunity to share it is definitely a blessing. And I think that other people will be able to share their stories and be able to get the word out there more and change the paradigm that we've been living in. Take me back to when you shared it with your father and you thought it was a big mistake. So my dad is kind of like a touch, feel, see it. If you can't see it, it's not there, you know, and he doesn't like to talk about it, think about it. And pretty much his first reaction was, how do you have time to think about that sort of thing when, you know, you need to be making money? And it's like everybody needs to make money. We all work. We all have to do that. But that's, you know, if something major happens to you, it's going to kind of, you know, you're going to think about it. And 
it, it was major. And that's, if it were just something small where I saw something, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, I probably wouldn't have paid much attention to it, uh, enough to tell people about it the way that I did. But I stay, I've been pretty quiet for quite some time because of that situation. So with your father, uh, and you're being a father today, knowing that that's somebody you would want to turn to for trust, protecting, does that make you uh, prepare yourself to be a better father for your children? Absolutely. And I think, and this is no knock at either one of my parents, but every mistake that they've made, anything that they've done that's not right, anything that, you know, hasn't been there for me in my life, I use that in my parenting. So I definitely think that I'll be able to utilize that judgment, the kind of ridicule that I've received. And that's the way I see everything. I'm a, you know, half glass full kind of guy. How do you cope with it every day that you can't talk about this experience that you had? Honestly, I, I don't really cope with it. I have a PTSD where if I'm driving in the, um, in the car and I see lights that look similar to what I saw, it, it scares me and I kind of get shaky. Um, it freaks me out and I have to look at it for a minute to make sure it's not what I saw that night. And um, sometimes I work out probably about an hour away from where I had the sighting. And um, sometimes when driving out there, I just get, get kind of freaked out. Um, and uh, nightmares, uh, you know, flashbacks, you, you name it, you know, it's, uh, it definitely, you know, it's, it's still there and it lingers and it's almost been exactly one year. You say nightmares, uh, is this something that you and your uh, children's mother deal with? So my children's mother, um, we've, been, we've been split up since 2021. So, um, you know, she and I have been in the car together and seen, uh, I think probably two or three UFOs and one of them major, you know, unexplanation that still to this day, I don't even know what that was, but um, we don't really talk too much about that. Um, and partly just because out of anybody in the world that I want to see me in a sane light, it's her. <laughs> and she's also kind of similar with my how my dad is uh, with the UFOs, doesn't like to talk about it. Just kind of, you know, it, that's for crazy people. So that just... How do you manage to love someone that you can't talk to to be there for you for everything? That's hard, but I think that comes to just being a compassionate person, just being a loving person. And uh, that's what I strive to be. That's what I know that I am. And that's what my children are. And that's what I put out. So I can't control everybody else, but if I'm able to put out positivity, love, um, you know, that energy, I, I do believe resonates with people, you know, maybe not as much as it could, but, you know, I do what I can. This is someone that you love, trust. How does she appears to you, though, on, on certain occasions? Um, so it makes it feel like that should be somebody that I can trust, that, that that should be somebody that I could talk to, that I can confide in with this kind of information. And uh, in reality, it's kind of the opposite of that. And um, it's kind of like that generally, and I'm sure many people can relate, but there's been, you know, a couple people that have taken me serious and have uh, helped me. And as far as, you know, just being there, uh, and not judgmental. And that's something I'm able to pick up on uh, a lot and more so now than ever. And it's just ever since that, that day, um, strange things have been happening as far as ESP goes. Um, and it's just getting more intense. It sounds like that you're saying that 
out of all the people in the world and people that strangers that would listen to you, but really the people that you love the most um, is the ones that is not really uh, allowing you to share your experience. And, and that's really something that you're, you're not feeling. That's it. That's, that's right. And that is, uh, that's what's happening. The people that, you know, I love the most the people that, um, I think would take me serious in situations where it's a big deal for me, you know, and they don't, and that, that does hurt <clears throat> and it does hurt honestly. And, um, that's something that I think with things like we're doing now, um, you know, things getting publicized, uh, disclosure, those things will eventually help that in general. So as a man, um, most of people feel that we should be strong, uh, not cry. These encounters appear to break down the strongest of the men. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And that's the thing too is, uh, you know, you could be the strongest, toughest man, but when something that takes power over you and puts you in a vulnerable situation and lets you know you have no control. Sorry for this interruption. I just want to make this quick PSA announcement. I was nominated for the 2024 Conscious Award uh, podcast category, and now it is time for the votes. And if you like podcasts like this and stories like this, and I'm doing a great job, there is a link right here in the description of this video. Click it, go to where you see Roderick Martin, Why the Big Secret, pick the tab, vote for me to be the 2024 podcast winner in this year's Forbidden Knowledge Annual Conscious Awards for 2024. Thank you for your support. You know, in that situation, it, you get humbled and any previous thoughts you had of being a macho man pretty much disappears. I think that, you know, any man should not be afraid to show emotions, uh, especially when dealing with something that you know, is a big deal to them or uh, affects them in a serious way. They should be able to talk to people, show emotion, um, you know, seek love, seek support, and not be ridiculed, not be shamed. And I say you should be stronger than that. You, should be, you shouldn't need anybody. You should be able to just man up and deal with it. You know, that, to me, that's something that hopefully we steer away from in the future. What some of the challenges that you have faced in keeping this a secret, though? Like I said, with the ESP and things that have happened after the situation, having to keep that a secret and knowing that most places I go, other people don't have that stuff happening is hard because it makes it feel like I don't fit in. It almost makes it feel like uh, I can't fit in. And that um, when I try to talk to people, uh, you know, not even about what I'm going through or what's happening to me, just talk to people in general. It's like a disconnect. And all of this since last year that that happened. And I was 29 when that happened. So, you know, um, I hadn't had a problem with that before. <laughs> and I was very, very social. Always had so many friends. I have to tell some people, stop calling me for a little bit. You know, it's, um, it's not like that anymore. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. But I definitely think it's just because of... Uh, for some reason, this happens to some people, but not to everybody. And, you know, it's, I don't know if it's a, like we were saying earlier, a natural reflex for people just to have to, you know, push that subject aside and just not talk about it. But that's pretty much, that's what it seems like is happening. How do you cope with your emotional and psychological impact of just walking around with this secret that you have? So I don't know if there is, if there are other people in my situation that can relate, but from the research that I've done and from everything that I've seen, people that have been in my situation or been abducted, you know, um, situations like that, most of the time they've been through a lot of trauma in their life prior to this event occurring. And I think that, uh, I don't know if that plays a part in it. I don't know if that just builds a stronger psyche in a person, but I do know that, uh, 
you know, throughout all the things that I've seen in life, which is a lot, especially growing up in Louisiana, um, it, that was really hard. But then to have this happen, that takes the cake. And um, the psychological trauma and uh, emotions that I deal with, it's, uh, it's mostly because of the disconnect with people and not being able to open up, not being able to, you know, uh, be around like-minded people or people that share similar emotions and I think um, that that's that's the reason why you ever cry I do but I haven't I haven't cried recently you know if I ever cry it's about my kids and it's just because uh, they're far away from me right now unfortunately and it hasn't always been like that this uh, this happened last year. Me and their children's mother broke up right before that. Their kids got taken away from me right after that. You know, I haven't had a significant other, haven't had a lot of friends, people I can connect with. So in reality, it has been very hard. <laughs> uh, this past year has been very hard. Do you think if you were to um, try to go to court or something to change the situation with the kids, would she try to use this encounter thing against you? She probably could. I just don't think that it would hold much weight. I think that, uh, you know, who I am does speak for itself. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't drink alcohol. I don't do drugs. I don't, um, you know, go out and party with people. Uh, you know, and if another parent does do that and one parent doesn't do that, the parent that does do that, they can say pretty much anything they want to about the other person, but it, like I said, I don't think it's going to hold a lot of weight. Why is this a big secret? I, I asked the same thing, and even today I, I asked that. Um, and to be honest with you, that's what I'm trying to figure out as well. And I personally think why the big secret is because we are more than what we think we are. Take us back to the moment and describe that experience. Okay, so this is a big one. Um, so that day, my son was in Louisiana with my mom, and that's his grandmother, his murmur. And I was in Dallas that weekend working, and I knew that I had to go get my son, so I tried to leave as early as I could, but I didn't end up getting there until the evening when it was already about to be dark. Um, I was not trying to drive at night, but it was okay because I thought about him sleeping on the way anyways. Um, so we were driving back on I-20. That's the road that takes you from, uh, you know, North Louisiana to North Texas. And um, we drove probably about an hour and a half on the road. And we were already about an hour into Texas. And we were passing through uh, Longview area. And all of a sudden on the right hand side of the sky, I started seeing a lot of red lights, red orbs. And being in Dallas all the time, I just assumed with my logical brain that these are airplanes. But then I realized this is in the middle of the country, um, pitch black everywhere, it's, it's not airplanes. And so I started seeing them pulsate, I started seeing them move what looked like out of each other and they started to multiply. And so it was five to 10, ended up being 20, ended up being maybe 30, 40, possibly even more than that. Um, I wasn't really counting at that moment. I just saw that it was, the whole sky was filled up with these red orbs. And then I looked behind me and said, Kyson, look, to my son. And right when I turned back around, I saw several cars in front of me slam on their brakes and kind of swerved side to side. And then the next moment I woke up in Dallas and my son's next to me. And I was kind of still dealing with the emotion from what I was just going through. And so I woke up wondering, how did I get back? And here we are almost a year later, March 13th, 2022 is when this happened. Um, and I still don't know how I got back to Dallas. I still don't know what happened. I still don't know. I saw a whole bunch of cars slam on their brakes and then lost my memories. I, I'm, I didn't end up wrecking those, you know. It's, I don't know what happened. The very next day, weird things started to happen. I started to have a different view on everything, almost like a psychedelic experience, but 
I wasn't on psychedelics. And I started to look at everything from a biogeometric standpoint, meaning like everything biology is geometric and everything is connected. The whole universe is quantum physics. You know, it's just everything came to me at one time. And it was overwhelming because I had never thought uh, on that level of thinking before. So I was trying to piece together what I'm seeing, how I'm seeing this. You know, it just didn't make sense to me. Other weird things started to occur where, um, you know, it, I would see shadows, I would see things that I thought were people, and that's where I started to feel kind of crazy. And then after that, the ESP, the psychic phenomena started happening where I would be able to uh, hear things inside of my head. And I know that sounds really crazy, but I would be in the bathroom, I would turn on the water, move my head a certain angle, and I can hear the radio inside of my brain. And it's a DJ, uh, you can hear songs, different songs, commercials, and my dad said he heard it too, but then he didn't talk about it after that. And then I kept hearing it, and then I kept hearing electricity in the walls, and I could hear through the walls how the electricity, which where they were going, and didn't understand that either, still don't. And something that's happened over the last couple months is being able to hear conversations or what's going on several hundred feet away uh, in a whole other side of a building inside of my head, just like I heard the radio. Uh, even people's energies, emotions, empath type uh, situations have been occurring as well. And, you know, that is... Uh, something that I think is very natural. I think that we just don't understand that. But the fact that it happened right after this, you know, UFO situation occurred, that's what is weird to me. And from what I've also heard and researched that many people that have been abducted or had something strange happen, they've also had this sort of phenomenon happen afterwards. So it doesn't seem as crazy to me it just seems like uh, I would like answers. So I'm still asking why myself. And dealing with, you know, hearing a radio inside of your brain doesn't sound like it's that bad. But whenever I try to actually focus on what's being said, sometimes I can get uh, a very bad migraine tension like headache in the back of my head. It's almost like something's trying to stop me. And then whenever I walk away from that area, it's gone. So I don't know if it has to do with that area. I don't know if it has to do with where my brain is at at that moment. I don't understand that, but these things have been happening. Um, my son, he has had weird things occur as well, but with him being so young, I can't really you know, ask him certain questions that you just can't ask a three or four year old. What are some weird things that are happening with him? He, the same way that I was seeing everything through math and, you know, everything that was biological, you could see the math. And he was seeing things similar because every time I take him to the park, he would just run around, go down the slides, play with other kids. Every time after I'd take him to the park, the very next day I took him to the park and he was just crawling everywhere he was just crawl. And then I would ask him what's wrong and he would point at the lines or he would point at, um, you know, if it's a lot of kids, he would get freaked out by all the kids. He would get freaked out by all the lines. But he's never done that before until after that day. And then so what I took it as was how it was happening to me where it was just getting, your brain's just getting overwhelmed by math and numbers and too many things going on at one time where, you know, it's just, you're just not used to it. And also him seeing weird things, but I think all kids see weird things. Um, there's been a couple times where he said he's seen something strange or he saw an alien that uh, he was really, really scared. I didn't take it that serious, but maybe that's also part of the problem is we don't take things serious when our kids say things like that. And we don't pick up on some of the warning signs of, there being something else more out there. You mentioned um, from your experience and your father wouldn't really give you 
the moment, the minute, or whatever to, you know, talk about it. Um, wouldn't you say if you're not really taking him serious that you're duplicating that? Yeah, I would say that. And I did ask him. He, he said, Daddy, I saw a green alien. And I asked him, where did you see it? And I walked over there and looked, and I didn't see it. And that doesn't mean it wasn't there. That doesn't mean he didn't see anything. But I didn't want to ask too many questions. I didn't want to freak him out. So I didn't continue on. Um, but I think I think you're right about that. And I think that, that I do need to be more aware in the future and, and definitely take him serious because I know that if he were in my situation and something happened to him and I was older in my dad's situation, uh, I would definitely take him a lot more serious. So it, it's safe to say, or it sounds like that, via of your experience, that something happened to you, something changed you. Something definitely changed me. And uh, it, it's been a big, it's been something that's been impacting my life for the past year in a major way. How major? To the point where it, it affects my work life. It affects the kind of people I have around me, the relationships I have with my family, um, the habits, hobbies that I used to have, uh, my interests, uh, it, it just in, anything in life, you name it, it's, it's affected me. It seems like it's hard now talking about it, you're holding it back a little bit. but It is a little hard, and I think that it's just reliving a traumatic experience, reliving the pain or emotions that come from my family or close ones not not being there for me, uh, that's that all comes together, and I think that that I feel all that at once, and you know that's uh, something else with that's happened after this uh, event is that I can also pick up other people's emotions, and I get sad from thinking of my own emotions, and then if I feel other people's emotions, it's just it's an overload. So, you know, I am speaking for myself right now, but I know there's many, many, many people that have been in my same exact situation that don't have a spotlight to talk. They don't have somebody that will listen that has validity. They won't, you know, ever be in a situation to have that help. So they're just kind of stuck feeling crazy. And if you were in the 70s, you'd be lobotomized. So, you know, it's... It's a lot of pain out there in the world right now from many, many people going through similar situations. So what finally led you to the decision to share this experience like this on camera? I really think that everything happens for, for a reason. If you look back at certain events that led up to something, you can pretty much see how everything pieces together perfectly. But I think that I was watching a, a, one of your live chats actually, and I decided just to just tell the experience that happened to me. And I don't know why, but I did it on the live chat, and next thing you know, you saw it. And uh, you said to reach out. Uh, I thought that I had already done a MUFON report, I didn't. But I recently did. Uh, I did reach out to you. Uh, you did reach out back. Um, and, you know, here I am right now. and. And I'm very thankful for that. And I do think that the steps and everything that led up to this is, uh, is for a reason. So I hope that we're able to get the word out. And I hope that uh, other people can, you know, feel what I'm feeling and, uh, or at least understand. And, you know, if there's somebody that they have in their life that's just not getting them, that it's okay. You know, that there are people that will listen and uh, to don't be afraid to say it, you know. So what do you need? How can we help you? I think you are right now. I think just by having me here, just by um, sharing my story, just by being able to um, share with the community, I think that that's a huge help for me. And I think that it goes a long way. And what would you say to the person that's watching that had a similar experience and they just really don't understand it. Look in the camera and talk to them and what would you tell them? I would just say um, that it's okay if you don't understand it because I don't think we ever will understand it. And um, 
might be beyond our physics, might be beyond in this lifetimes of understanding, but just know that you're not alone. Just know that I'm in a similar situation. Many, many people are in similar situations and that you don't have to be afraid to reach out. Even if people ridicule you, even if people try to share their opinion or shed it on you, you know, don't listen. Cause that's kind of what I've done. And I think that's what a lot of people do. And we put too much importance on what other people think around us that we're not just embracing our story for who we are and what we go through. Okay, Blake, is there anything as we close out you want to share or we left off or anything? I do think that many people, if you're watching this and you have been through a similar situation and you have not yet, I do recommend uh, doing a little bit of research on our ancient history. Find out what kind of resonates with you the most because there is a lot of history out there and that will open up your mind a lot more to be able to understand because I think that's what we all want is just to be able to understand more. And I think that if you understand where we've been, you might know where we're going. And Blake, I just want to say I'm proud of you. Uh, and, and really, if there's anything else that I can do for you uh, in the Why the Big Secret community, from all of us, we appreciate you coming into the studio. And uh, as I've always said, your eyes are useless when your mind is blind, but your mind is not blind for that your eyes saw what it saw in your experiences. And I'll say this to any of people that's listening, you know, it takes a lot of courage for him to sit here before you to be able to share. Uh, and this is what it's all about. This is why we're reaching out. And you're gonna see more and more people come forward. And I want people to understand that uh, although I'm a UFO investigator and I can focus on what's going on in the sky, I really think it's time to pay attention to what's happening with people on the ground, like Blake. Thank you for being here. Well said, thank you, Roger. Thank you for watching this. If you're a kind of person that likes these types of stories and you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area and you want to come by the studios, please contact me on this particular 800 number that you see right here or send an email to contact at whythebigsecret.com and also say that you're in the area and you would love to tell your story and come by the office. Now, however, you don't have to live here to share your testimony, but definitely I would love for you to come by the studio so that I can record your testimony such as we did with Blake. Make sure you subscribe here to Forbidden Knowledge TV and also hop over to Roderick Martin High Strangeness YouTube channel and then go ahead and subscribe and set all of those alerts so that you don't miss when I upload or I go live and any other videos that we do. Thank